Welcome to the Hard Headed Podcast, where we're going to be taking a practical and realistic approach over the next few episodes on the 23 traits that it takes to be a better father, better dads to our kids. Join us as we embark on this journey. Welcome to the Hard Headed Podcast. My name is Matt Amos with you as always. Uh, with me. Uh, with me as always. How are now you? you? Now you've got me saying all messed up <laughs> stuff. Uh, with me as always, Chet Sears, Troy Trussell. Uh Getting ready to kick off episode 190. On yeah, the, uh, technically, you already kicked it off. The the series here. Well, no, I'm going to start over. And then uh, with the 23 <laughs> characteristics of a good father, um, we're doing a 19, 20, and 21 today. Um, number 19 being don't use profanity in front of the kids until they're in high school. Ah, number 20. Ah, shut your mouth. You could talk. It doesn't say it that way. Talk. It it does actually in the article. There's no parentheses. Well, there's a parentheses until they're in high school. No, there's not. No, there's not in my article. Oh, good gosh. Number twenty, let them be a kid. Uh, number twenty-one. Because that's teach it. It's them. like, hey, when they're in high school, you better start Shut using profanity. Up. Let me finish. Twenty-one, teach them about finances. <laughs> Matt's about the use of profanity. <laughs> I, I would have already if it wasn't for this article reminding me not to use this in front of my kids I'm trying to. or. Others, ch- other people's childrens who might be listening. That's right. Because <laughs> you might have some kids listening to this and giving their giving them their folks advice, like, "Hey, why don't you? Uh, why don't you listen to that podcast again? Why don't pops? you listen to that podcast and uh, where they said, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, Stop using the profane language. Well, they didn't say that, uh, but they said take some interest in what I'm interested in. Oh, okay. you know, maybe they're giving their <laughs> trying to hook their parents up for success. But nineteen, don't use profanity in front of kids until they're in high school. What do you What do you think about that, Chet? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I don't. I'm not an advocate for using it in front of the kids after they're in high school. Just don't use profanity in front of anybody. I'm an av- advocate for that. How you like them apples? I'm an advocate. I just uh, I'm not very good in practice. You're not a demonstrator. Yeah, I'm not very good at demonstrating that. I try to do a lot better in front of the kids. Um, I don't think I use very much in front of the kids. I mean, if I was going to cut you some slack, I'd say, well, you're in the Marine Corps. It's in your culture. Uh, 10 years yeah. ingrained into me. Yeah. Yeah. But you also gave up dipping like it was nothing. I know. The, uh, cursing so much harder. Yeah? Yeah, because it just rolls off the tongue. I don't know. It, just, <laughs> it does. It's, it's, it, it, it's like somebody speaks a certain way for so long and then that's being a marine's a part of me it's not solely who i am right but it's a good portion of who i you know what what made me who i am today yeah <laughs> physically, physically and psychologically it's kind of like that uh that that movie uh what's the one where they go to space and they're killing the bugs starship troopers oh, starship yeah. troopers that mobile infantry made me the man I am today, and he's missing an arm and two legs. Kind of <laughs> always makes me chuckle. <laughs> but it's, uh, but I mean, it is. It it's part of my culture, and I, I again, I've I've said it so many times on this podcast, but I am I am working on it. It's a constant battle. It's like one of my biggest vices to to give up is is the language. Um, but I try not to do it in front of the kids. I shouldn't do it at all, but it slips every now and again. I think I think one of the things behind this is like your kid needs to be a kid. They don't need to be in an, in adult environments when they're not an adult. Like I think that's that's one of the, the thing that's. Uh, you think it ties in with number twenty. Let them be a kid. Probably so. Yeah. So in this one, you know, and in, in this, you know, at least he doesn't think that I'm um, a terrible parent because I have dropped the occasional f bomb around my kids. Uh, and but putting the our. our uh, the qualities of being a good father and putting our needs second, which, you know, my need would be to blurt out whatever I'm thinking at the time, instead of controlling uh, my vocabulary. Um, and he says that includes wanting um, uh, to talk like a Tarantino script uh, when we're around them. Yeah. Um, and so I don't do that. I mean, I'm not a Tarantino, uh, you know, yeah. yeah, yeah. Talking script guy. But, your your you language know, today is more uh, like with, with emotion. 10 years ago, it would have been, Right. You know, but now it's, it's, you know, it's more something happened and I'm not happy. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what usually happens with me. I mean, before I, a fit of rage. Yeah. Before I gave my life to Christ, I 
like I was a Tarantino script. I mean, that's just the way I talked. Um, and then I was able to basically flip a switch and, and kind of, and turn it off. And I could do that back then. Cause when I was at home, I didn't talk that way about around my parents right, right. and you know, so I could flip that switch. But, uh, I find when I, when it starts coming out more and more is what you're putting in. Right. So if you're watching some, sh- a lot of Tar- shows, Tarantino movies, you're watching some Tarantino movies, you know, back to back. Yeah. You know, you start hearing it a lot, you know, then it starts to creep back in, in my life anyway. Yeah. Uh, now I did like, we were in the kitchen, uh, one night and it, this came up about the F word and I was like, well, what, do, how, how do y'all even know what that word is? And my daughter like stopped what she was doing, turned around and looked at me. She was like, cause you said it. And I was like, <laughs> what are you talking about? And she was like, I heard you in the garage one day and you, you hit your thumb or something with the hammer. Yeah. And you started you fly. screaming it. And like, was, like bleep, multiple bleep, bleep. times? <laughs> yes, apparently. Yeah. I, it's when we lived over by you guys. Yeah. You in, still have in a that thumb? house. Was it that bad? Yeah. I, I don't even remember what I was doing. But I thought I was alone in the garage. Now that doesn't make it right. Right. But she was in there and she heard me. And I never knew this until she told Jesus us that. Jesus sees it. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. And then uh, uh, I, I don't know how many more months later we were at our next house and we had wooden step, wooden stairs in that house. Mm-hmm. And I slipped. It was in the middle of the night. I slipped. Well, not the middle. I was putting the boys upstairs. So my daughter and wife were still awake. I slipped at the very bottom, missed that bottom step or something, and I fell, and my elbow hit that wooden yeah. stair, and it just came out. And uh, I was, it hurt, and I was in pain. And my wife comes over. She looked at Maggie, and she goes, don't ever say what your dad just said. And then she looked at me and was like, are you okay? Are you going to be all right? <laughs> She did the uh, protecting this, of the little ears before the safety exactly, of but this was already after the conversation we had had where she yeah. had already heard it. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it happens, and I think you're the one that told me like when you when you scream, it's scientifically proven when you scream Mythbusters obscenities. Did a whole episode when on you it. curse. Yeah, yeah. When you scream obscenities, yeah. when you're hurt, it makes it feel yeah. Your pain better. is reduced according yeah. to the, the Mythbusters <laughs> measurement that they did. That's hilarious. That was a fascinating <clears throat> episode. I mean, I don't think it worked very well when I got my legs blown off, but <laughs> maybe well, yeah. did it? Maybe did it you even, were you even know? Were you like letting letting the bad language fly? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> not, not not like a whole lot, but just like yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's not the worst I've ever been. We'll put it that you way. You know, the most epic thing would have been like they'd still be talking about it. If you'd have let out like an all shucks when you got blown up. <laughs> oh man. Oh shucks. <laughs> Doggone it. That would have been Dag Nevit. You gotta come like, out with the old ones. Matt's got the foulest language ever, but when he got blown up by that IED, he said all shucks. <laughs> oh shucks. Gosh dang it. <laughs> dad burned. <laughs> Blew off my dad burned legs. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, that'd have been hilarious. You go get those rascally sons of guns. <laughs> oh man. All right. Moving on, number 20. <laughs> let them be a kid. Uh you know, and it it kind of leads into uh the world is conspiring to rob our kids of their innocence at a young age. And I think we're seeing that now, the the push to to make kids seem like they're older and older than they actually are. Um you know, whether that be through, uh, you know, movies or, or video games or the, you know, just, uh, technology. Um, and yeah. I, I mean, you know, it, 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 it sucks to see your kid, you know, like, cause you have the, you know, like Troy's kids are, you know, your, your, your kids are kind of at that age where it's like, you got the, you got the innocence, you know, and it's, it's kind of cool. They're, they're just, they're, they're kids. You know, and you got YouTube creeping in trying to tell them what's up. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and, and uh, so you've, you know, and you've done a good job of limiting that and say, hey, you know, guess what? No more YouTubes, you know, 
because it does suck to see your kids kind of grow up and and, and mature, you know, because yeah. you always want to be you want to be kids forever. But, you know, eventually they've got to grow up. And, yeah. The hard thing that we're facing right now is uh, kid. So we have a 13 year old about to be 14 and a 12 year old that all of their friends have phones and ours don't. Mm-hmm. Now, our daughter, she has an iPad, so it's basically a phone, um, but she can't call on it. Yeah. You know, uh, unless she's in the house. Yeah, you, yeah, but using call, calling on that, you don't do that. Well, I mean, they, fa- they FaceTime <laughs> and stuff. Hello. Uh, yeah. They don't, no, no calls. That's, that's, that's so out with young, young kids today. But the, but the hard thing is with when, uh, like, our son goes to his friend's house and his friend has a phone and they're like FaceTime and friend girls and all this like yeah oh yeah. yeah so we've had to have some some talks about that and yeah basically just warning him of what what that phone can do right and how much trouble you can get in cuz the, the, they don't even think of the stuff that they're doing no no and but it can get them in a lot of trouble yeah so that's something we never had to deal with when we were that age you know yeah, they uh, like I was talking to some guys that work in uh, student ministry at churches. Like when I was, the stuff that they were trying to address with high schoolers when I was in high school, like you talking about, you know, younger and younger with technology, they're they're having to approach some of those things in like the fifth and sixth grade ministries now, like fifth graders dealing with the heavy weight of learning certain things, um, and in the fifth grade versus when we were, you know sophomores ninth ninth, 10th grade yeah yeah and that's moving quickly moving into third and fourth grade right because uh, the reality is is a lot of times we're uh we're letting our uh our devices be babysitters and instead of having expectations your kids are going to go out and play they're just going to go sit in the corner and get online you know and and you're you can't as much as you try you're not going to be able to control all of that yeah. So, and also a part of being a kid is not being on an electronic device. Go explore the world, you know, go, uh, go play. Don't come home till the street lights come on. I wouldn't know because they didn't have street lights where I grew up, Matt. <laughs> I was in the country. Yeah, we didn't either. Uh, what's that called? Uh, is that, is that, is that called free range parenting now? Is that I what they're calling that? They, they've got a specific term for it where like free range chickens yeah but it's like free range parenting you just bah, get out you know yeah that's how we were growing up right and it's so funny because um and i know we're going to cover this and and uh and i think it's the next episode where it talks about um helicopter the, the difference between hovering and, and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. protecting um you know because i think when i was growing up I, w- I i would disappear and i would not come home like they would they would not know where i was at yeah I was just gone. I'd be on my bike, gone, you know, I'd, or I'd be, uh, I, we had a Creek, um, that ran down our house and I'd, I'd follow that Creek for, for miles, you know, and then like, Oh shoot. I don't know if I'm going to get back before it gets dark. Right. I better, I better start hightailing it back, you know, and all the stuff that I was doing was just exploring and, and, you know, being a boy, you know, catching yeah. frogs and doing all that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, and then I look at it today and I, it's like, man, you know, with all the social media, like it's probably a good thing that my parents didn't have that because they didn't know all the bad stuff that, that went on, you know, or, or the potential for bad stuff. Yeah. Cause I think that's what makes us, uh, you know, do that a little bit more, but, um, so it's hard. It takes, I guess, a little bit of trust on our end as parents to, to just let them be kids and, and, uh, let them have those learning experiences while, setting the guidelines up front and, and the expectations up front. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Just leave and don't come back um, until. Until the lights come on. Until the porch lights on, basically, is how we were. We did have a dusted on light in our, the automatic in our come driveway. On. Yeah. And that was the, that was the signal. That was the, yeah, yeah, we, we had, uh, my, that was the porch light for me. Like the porch lights on, come on home. Yeah. Uh, number 21, teach them about finances. This is, I believe, extremely important. Oh, yeah. And I'm dealing with it r- right now. And again, my daughter hates me <laughs> using her as an example, but she's at the prime age, right? Where, uh, 
you, you, you've tried to, you know, preach a little bit of responsibility and, and, uh, using finance as well. And, and, um, I'm probably not the best example of utilizing finances properly because I'm the spender. Um, my wife is the saver. Uh, and so uh, my wife is extremely frugal. Um, and I mean, saves everything, ketchup packets. I mean, to like very frugal. Um, and you know, I, th- it, it, in a lot of ways that's transferred to my, to my kids. But the other day, my daughter, uh, my oldest was, uh, came home and was doing something. And I, I looked in her room and I was like, what is that? So it's an iPad. And I was like, where did you, where'd you get that? Yeah. Of course she has her own job. Right. You know, I, I get it. But I was like, why, why do you have that? Well, it's for, it's for school. I was like, how are you going to do college on a, on an iPad? She's like, well, it's no different than a laptop. And I'm like, Oh, it's way different than a laptop. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to stop here before I break number like 19 <laughs> and I'm actually going to go do some research. Maybe, maybe the, maybe well, now you can send email. Maybe now they can, you can yeah. write papers, you can go to you know, the, the website, you can do all that. But I was like, what if they give you a thumb drive? And I don't even think she knew what a thumb drive. Most laptops today don't even have USBs so, for thumb drives, you know, whatever. But this I was one like, doesn't. but I was yeah. like, you know, I was like, uh, why do you even have, how can you college with that? I don't know. It's hard. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand. So anyway, I may have been out of touch, right? Because I'm yeah. always like, I, if you have a presentation, you can turn this presentation in, like, yeah, thumb drive or something, right? No, no, you do it. Not you anymore. Do it you do it virtually or through the yeah, cloud yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I get it, you know. But I was like, why did you? How many? How much memory does that thing even have? Like, I wish you would have consulted me before making this purchase, because I could have got this one. I, I don't know how much you spent, but I'm gonna guess three, four hundred dollars. Yeah, I could have got that for you free. From Verizon. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, just come to me. Like, I, I, I'm not going to go to you because you would just say no. I'm kidding. <laughs> She's old enough now to make her own decisions. I'm in that. I'm in that uh, um, kind of that mentor, well, like, yeah, coach. yeah. Well, and part of like, here, here's the beauty of what's happening right now. If she's ever going to make a financially devastating series of choices and learn from them. Do it when the financial devastation is hundreds of dollars instead of hundreds of thousands or thousands. Yes. Yeah, yes. I, I get it. But I was just like, you know, I wish you really would have brought that uh, to me that that's something that you were looking at because I could have definitely yeah made a better purchase for you. Yeah. You know, whatever. I've noticed that with, uh, you know, Stone working concrete this summer and how much he gets paid. He <laughs> thinks about <laughs> that was hilarious. He loved it, by the way. Uh he thinks about in quantities of hours. Is that worth two hours of me doing that job? I'm going to break concrete for two hours. Yeah. Is that really worth breaking two more hours yeah. worth of concrete? Right. Right. I would work. Would I work half a day just to have those shoes? I don't, I don't think so. You know, not, <laughs> not now. but before the job, yeah, it didn't matter. It doesn't matter. The dad's you know? money. <laughs> it's just like, Whoa. And then mom's going to go sell another house. It's fine. But then also understanding you make, you make a bunch of money in the summer and it's got to last you for a certain amount of time. So you can't just live like you're making a bunch of money right now. It's, it's beautiful seeing it all come about now. Yeah. And I will say this, I, I'd, I'd have probably thrown a little bit bigger of a fit, uh, but my daughter's uh, bank account is tied to mine. So like I can see, yeah. you know, all the transactions she's got pretty good savings and, and checking. So I was like, okay, it's not, it's not that bad. Like yeah. I, I, you're saving a lot of money. That's not a big purchase for, for how much you've saved. Right. You know, I right. just, again, I just wish you'd have made. Yeah. Uh, ask me cause I could have helped you make a better choice. No, I think it's, and it's hard. And I know all, we, we did the spend, save, give jars and all that when they were young in the house and none of that works. It's, it's actually the doing with what you've earned. Like they, they don't, I, I didn't, I'm not picking on my kids or kids in general. You just don't understand the value of a dollar until you have to earn one. So getting in habits is good, but you don't like grasp it until 
you're out there and you're not able to go to the movies with your friends because you don't have enough money to go to the movies with your friends. You know, I mean, that that's the kind of, you're like, oh, why don't I have enough money? Oh, because I ate at uh, Freddy's three nights a week all summer or whatever that, you know, it's just like, oh, okay. Yeah. It, we, we bought the uh, financial piece for kids. Oh yeah. Dave Ramsey that teaches them the spin, save, give. And it, it, it's worked with Maggie. It's given her, you know, good habits put in place. And yeah, and yeah, you can see her saving for certain things, and then what I have to do now to get how many ba- things do I need to babysit? How many people do I need to babysit to get this? And right now, it's starting to be how many candles do I need to sell? And yeah, yeah, and I'm about to get it for for Noah because he started that uh, uh, lawn care training. He's yeah, doing your, that. your folks are telling me about. Yeah, that. he's doing that this summer. He's he's mowed I think five yards now. Once he gets up to fifty. Then they give him his own equipment to go out yeah. and start doing it himself. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't. I don't know if he'll hit that before the fall. Probably not. Right. But he'll do the same thing next summer, and he'll, you know, multiply. Yeah. Does he do anything on the west side? Yeah, it's all. It's uh, at a church over there. So I don't. I don't know where they go from with oh, that okay. church where we drop them off. But, but yeah, they go and they do. Do a bunch of lawns. It's like a, uh, it's kind of like a charity deal. They find lawns and and widows that can't mow, and that, and they go do their lawns for them. Oh, okay. So they're learning how to actually, you know, trim and mow and do all that stuff, so they can start their own business, which is pretty cool. But now he's like adding it up, right? So I want to get this Pokemon card or whatever. Yeah. He's like, I'd have to mow know two yards to get this and right. like he's like i need to go home we need to go find some yards i'm like that's a great thing that we can talk about trying to right. get, get you some clients but first you need your equipment yeah because yeah. because my mower ours is a battery operated one and that's not going to mow Does you that do any many good? yards for you yeah it's I've, great i've heard bad things can you mow your whole yard at one time uh we can get about 75 nah, that's, it's no. not great. that's a no you can't say it's that's great. a no it's got two batteries though so you can mow your whole yard. Well, yeah, you, but you have to switch out the battery. Shh. I was awful confused during that conversation. Whatever. So I think... Did you have to buy an extra battery or did it come with two? Well, we didn't have to buy a thing because our neighbor that moved gave it to us because oh. she didn't want to move with it. Okay. But I don't know. So I, I've heard I can't bad answer things that about those mowers. I don't know. The one we got works great. Yeah. Unless power's out. Well, yeah then you're not worried about mowing anyway yeah that's true that's exactly true. uh but anyway so so back to the 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 give so that's not mentioned um in here, here. yeah um but i think that's uh I, I think it's extremely important and um it's not just giving of finances but you can give in a multitude of ways like you know troy you're talking about your kids giving time to mow yards for uh for people um so time is time is money time is valuable um and it's just as uh it's an asset that you're giving of yourself. And the one thing that was hard for me, um, was, uh, you know, in the, in the Bible, it says, don't let your, um, right. Don't let your left hand know what the right hand is doing, mm-hmm. you know, when it comes to giving. Um, but, uh, I think it's important for your kids to see that. Um, and yeah. so I've always myself, I've always just given in private. Even I wouldn't let my wife, <laughs> she didn't know that I was giving, yeah. you know, stuff that I was given or, or stuff that I would donate to or, or whatever it would be. Um, but I think it's important for um, our kids to see that um, as well. So, you know, out in public, we're not touting it like, hey, I'm doing all this and look what I'm doing, you know. But within your family, I think it's important to, to give in front of your kids and let them see see you give, whether that's money or time. Right. Um, and why you're doing it. Um but that's an, I think that's just as uh, a vital of a part of finances as saving yeah. and spending. Well, kind of what Troy was talking about on the, uh, you know, uh, Noah saving up and buying Pokemon cards. I think you could tie both finances and let them be a kid together. Like that's that's what he ought to be buying. You know, a lot of times when we try to teach our kids about finances, we're trying to teach them to make the wisest decisions with their money when they're twelve. <laughs> right, and you you're not letting them be a kid. With that, like that's the most important thing to him right now. So, you let let him go buy some Pokemon cards, be a kid, uh, you know, at that, and to also 
Yes, but is there somebody else that you want to help or is there some something we should be saving for? Or you don't want to spend it all on Pokemon cards all right now. Yeah, that's but why we teach. It's the, OK. It's OK to have that. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Knock yourself out. You know, you know, you want to buy some gum? Yeah, sure. You know, teach the percentages of, you know, give 10 percent, spend and save. Can't remember the percentages that Ramsey actually teaches, but it's yeah. just a good good guidelines to have in place to form habits. So, all right, good deal. That brings us to the end of uh, these three. Uh, coming up next week, we've got uh, the final two, which is going to be uh, number twenty-two: understanding the balance of smothering slash helicoptering over your kids and keeping and and keeping them safe. Um, and then number twenty-three: limit their time on technology. Um, So that'll be next week. Uh, But to close us out this week, Troy, do you got something for us? Yeah, Hebrews 13, 5, and 6 says, Keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? So don't love money. I think as you're teaching your kids about finances, I think that's really important because – yeah, it's a big deal. It's it's still like one of I think uh, there's some stat I heard the other day, like uh, seventy some odd percent of people answer the question, "What's the mo- thing that stresses you out the most?" Seventy five percent of people respond like money. So a lot of times, if we're trying to teach our kids to avoid stress, we're actually stressing them out about money, making them think it's a lot more important than it should be in their lives. We may get more stressed out about having conversations about money with them than we do about eternal conversations. So um, you got to keep that in perspective and and know that if you're always trying to talk about finances to your kids, you're creating wealth as a potential idol for them. And that Hebrews verse Troy is a really good one to keep you grounded. Be content with what you got. Yep, it's good. All right, thanks for joining us. We'll catch you next week. Thanks for listening to the Hard Headed Podcast. Don't forget to share this podcast with others to help us get the word out. Also, if you haven't yet, please rate and review the show. This helps our podcast show up in other people's suggested shows that may or may not have listened to us before. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.